ongoing uh, stakeholder meeting, a really great stakeholder meeting. And uh, this evening, uh, we're, we have an agenda, which everybody, if you don't have one, just please let me know. We're going to go one. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to basically be covering that. And then if you guys have any questions, please let us know. So uh, let's start on this side of the room, and then we'll just kind of swoop around. Well, your piece, I'm the Assistant City Manager, Finance Director, Proceed Wilson. Warren Ehrenberg, Planning Commission. Paul Simon, Mayor Pro Tem. Albert Tadias, uh, Napa over here in Livingston. <coughs> <coughs> Catherine Shell Rodriguez, interested citizen and local blogger. <laughs> Roberto Molina, Public Works Director, City of Livingston. Where'd you say it from? City of Livingston. Oh. <laughs> But you said something else before that. Humberto Molina. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was fast. Yeah. I'm Holly Owen. I'm a current planner for City of Livingston. Well, Alfonso Manrique with uh, Gubay Engineering, uh, current city engineers. Well, Mario Gubay is the current city engineer. And I'm Richie Kane with Boston Farms. I'm Nellie McGarry with Senator Canella's office. And here comes our good citizen. Where am I supposed to sit? Right here. Yeah. We'll get back there you go. Yeah. She can sit in my chair, chair actually. Yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 here. We're going to give her this seat right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to sit right here. You don't want to go all the way around. I can go all the way over. All right. Okay. I didn't even know anything about her. I'm sorry, I'm disrupting everything. No, no, no. Yeah, you're not. You're welcome. Came in right, right, right at the right time. I did? Yes, yeah, just introduce yourself real quick. Thank you. If you want to just introduce yourself real quick, that would be good. Oh, I'm Marge McFadden. Thank you for being here, Marge. All right, so we left off with Ellie. Kay Greeley, and I'm interested in the Senate. Senator Simpson as well, former planning commissioner. Gene Okui, I farm in Livingston. Thank you. Oh, I'm Ramona Gore. I guess I'm a reporter with my sets on time. Of course, I'm Jose Ramirez, I'm the city manager. Thank you again for being here. All right, so uh, now that everybody has their agenda, uh, one of the first, what I want to do is formally introduce, uh, this is the first time that uh, Gabay Engineering and also uh, Collins and Shetler um, is formally introduced into the stakeholders. As you know, uh, they were awarded the, the, uh, the new engineering contract. And so uh, on the agenda, you'll notice the different areas of expertise that they have. Okay. So we won't spend too much time on that. It's pretty self-explanatory. But we did. We do want to get jump right in and kind of give you all an overview of basically our capacity and then our um, also filtration and then basically the status of each well and what are what are the, some of these next steps and then of course we have the CIP list that we've been uh, working on that will then. Uh, move into that we're going to be using as part of our uh, rate study, which will come later. But tonight, we're going to cover all those items that are on the, on, on the uh, agenda there. So with, with that, I will turn it over to uh, the president of uh, uh, the Engineering, uh, Mario Gouveia. Yeah, and then, so. then, then he'll turn it over to uh, <coughs> and yeah. Please, uh, this is informal, so if you have any questions, just raise your hand and we'll certainly address your any questions. Okay. Okay. Well, let me just get up here. It'll be a little easier. Uh, again, I'm Mario Gouveia of Engineering. And what we are doing now as we ramp up as new city engineers is familiarizing ourselves with the system. And I know the this, this city has a number of projects that are ongoing, and we just want to, you know, hit the ground running, take, you know, uh, move forward. Uh, we have a lot of experience. <coughs> with, uh, uh, water resources, that's one of the forecases <coughs> of the firm. Uh, I do a lot of the, the new wells and tanks and things of that sort, and Alfonso does all the, uh, the treatment processes, so we complement each other in, uh, in a, a water resources field. Um, <clears throat> so we, we looked at the, the one, there, you do have a, a number of issues, as, as I'm sure you all know probably some a little better than I do, but uh, we have to look at two things. One is the, the capacity, the, the, how much water the city is producing, and then the other thing is uh, water quality issues. And do you have uh, some issues with both of them? So I think I'll, pe I'll pass uh, uh, 
pass it on to uh, Alfonso uh, because he, he prepared this in terms of uh, uh, quality and how we, we have our wells here in the city uh, divided in two zones, that sort of thing, and, and the capacity that you have available versus your maximum daily, daily demand. And if you have any little bit of water left over, so the will probably to take over. And then I'll jump in later on. So we sort of, you know, Alfonso now again, we have already introduced myself, but I'm with, with Mario and, and uh, I've worked with him on, on water quality and, and water. Where, where's your firm, may I ask? Um, Augustine. Augustine? Yeah. So it's not? Yeah, it's very cool. And just for, as a side note, uh, Gavay Engineering is the city engineer for uh, Newman, for Augustine, and a couple others. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Alfonso. So, uh, so we put together this presentation, as, as, as Jose said, to kind of um, summarize what you know, the situation as we find it now, as what we, we find the one coming in. And uh, to sort of start putting some numbers on the CAP so that we know what you know what expenses we have ahead of us to correct some of these problems and maybe craft uh, you know a, a, a way that we can fund all these all these through. Um, and the first slide, the slide number three that we talked about here is water availability, and we, we looked at that um, to kind of see where we stand and, and how can we you know whether we can uh, bring in new development in town or whether there is enough capacity for new development or, or for room. So um, just for, for those that most of you will know that the water source for the city is exclusively groundwater. That's what we rely on. And for that, we have a total of eight wells. And the combined production capacity is about 7,588 gallons. And, and that combined capacity is what the regulatory agencies call com production capacity, which is not all of it. You actually produce more, but the regulators only allow you to take um, all the capacity minus your largest well out of service. So they, they make you take one well out of service to um, so that you can claim that capacity. Uh, so that's seven thousand five hundred and eighty-eight. So that com that number comes from the California Department of Public Health. Uh, so uh, once again, it's all <coughs> they take the, the total number of wells. And they they make you set aside the most uh, the highest production well, and that's the number. Right. And the um, th the next line is called about CDs MDD that your maximum day demand as you don't call them, uh, but it's maximum day demand, and that what it is that is it's looking at your last two years of production data. We took the, the day of of, uh, of within the last two years the day that the city consumed the most water. And you know, so that day was about 10 million gallons, which, which is about 7,135 gallons. You have your maximum day demand. Um, so the difference between your production capacity with one well out of service um, minus your uh, maximum day demand is about 453 gallons a minute, which is you know pretty pretty uh, close. You know, you don't have a lot of room for for capacity, but using the, the state's rule of the two and a half gallons per minute per connection, that's about uh, uh, 181 uh, additional connections that, that would be right now available in the system. Um, we know that if we had all the wells in service, we would probably be able to take more, but you know, that, that's kind of like an ideal, an ideal situation. So that's, that's where we can, we, we're pretty... So you, take, so you take that 181 and you have to factor in that uh, the, the developments that are in the pipeline, like the Motel 6, the CVS, the AutoZone, the Rancho San Miguel, and the uh, apartments. And so that will pretty much reduce that 181 down to, I don't know, what, 81 or 30 or something. Yeah. Yeah. So really, in realistic <coughs> terms, that's what we have about 130. And that's all the subdivisions that haven't been built out? And, and, and all those other subdivisions that come knocking on the door, basically, this is the number that we have. We don't have any additional. There's not a whole lot. But I mean, the ones that have that are already <coughs> established but haven't been built on yet. We have quite a few yeah. lots. Yeah. Those. Okay. When those come and we we get the development agreements in, a lot of those development agreements are expired. Oh, okay. So okay. then we have to negotiate with the city, and you'll see how that ties <coughs> in a little further into the presentation because. 
uh, well 17, which is uh, a, a, a new well that is being proposed and being worked on, will be talked about. So I was just going to touch on these 181 connections. That's actually EDU's equivalent welding unit. It's like a house. It's not like a normal house. Which comes out you have a big people per home. A big uh, something that uses a lot of water because it's not one connection. Excuse me. What's your take on this, the city of Oakdale, the city of Turlock, the city of Modesto, they've blown the whistle that there's, those wells are drying up. Is that, what's your take on that? I mean, there, there's out the, there. I don't yeah, know about the, it. Yeah, uh, the aquifer here, you know. It's, Unless we have some good rain season. Yeah, you're, you're still okay because they, they, it's going to be a long time until you, you get a, a production deficiency. Uh, so I, I, I think at this point, that's not going to be a, a, a really big concern on the actual production. Yeah. But, but, but there is going to be later on the presentation yeah, long-term we'll, recommendations. Yeah, we'll to right. touch on, on that, but it's not the, the hottest thing now. Is it? It's just and the key more, is the snowpack, not rainfall. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. Yeah. Rainfall <laughs> helps, but it, no, it helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. rain, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we prepared sort of a, a picture when we let me just chime in just a teensy bit, just so that it keeps in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. Not only not only that, but another factor is, as 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 more of the irrigation districts continue to line their canal, you are not uh, uh, going to be uh, lucky enough to mm -hmm. have that uh, you know yeah, natural so percolation. That's a recharge. There, there's a loss there. There's a recharge, yeah. and so as more get lined. That's less recharged, that's right, that's right. and so just just a side note on that. The conservation the conservation efforts by all these entities that really limits the amount of recharge to the aquifers and all that. And, you know, and it's all tied together. So you're right that the aquifer so, levels are going so down. There's subsidence right. of land and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so this yeah, all it's ties more of a long-term problem. With, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but it, uh, it's going to get there. But it's more of a long-term. And so this ties in really good. Well, that's why we're part of the Irwin, which right. on the 19th next week the city is looking at adopting it. And you can see because we look at the entire right. water basin, yeah. we're not just individual cities uh, and uh, so forth and so on. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, recapping the 8181 connections or 130 after the commitments that the city already has, um, that's the situation today. And that doesn't mean that the city isn't working towards increasing that number and, and doing that in the short term, in the, in the, in the short term. The next, the next picture in the next slide, and you probably can see it maybe better on your handout, it kind of shows the location of the eight wells that the city has. Um, and uh, it has, as, as you can see, you know, they're, they're color coded. The first the blue ones are the ones that are in compliance right now. Um, and, this, and they want, then there's some wells that are out of compliance, out of various constituents. Sure. There's some wells that are out of compliance, and then there is, in yellow uh, here, is wells that are not in service yet or, or that have been abandoned. So as you can see, in the city, it's kind of divided by 99, north and south. So we have a north. The, connect, the distribution system is all one distribution system and is connected underneath 99. But there's a north area uh, and, a, and a south area of, of town. And if you see in the north area part of town, most of, your, of these wells are, are, are in compliance. Uh, some of them, like well 16, is in compliance because it has a treatment system on it. It's not because the water comes out of it. It's out of compliance, but it has a treatment system on it. and. Uh, if it's not, uh, the, the media has been replaced on this well recently, so it should be back in production shortly. Now, in the south part of town, you have well 15 and well 13. Those two wells are out of compliance, with well 13 being the main one because it's a primary constituent. It's called arsenic, and primary constituents are constituents that um, are health related. Uh, where well 15 has a it has a compliant issue with the constituents called manganese, which is an aesthetic issue. Doesn't have anything to do with health, but it's more of a aesthetic issue. Um, so those two wells are out of compliance, and then what we have here is well ten that was abandoned years ago because of a nitrate problem, and, and that hasn't been hydrogen sulfide. Uh, hydrogen sulfide, and that hasn't been it hasn't been found, and it's been it's considered abandoned. Although there's maybe efforts now to maybe re bring it back to life or re drill next to it, or yeah. even though uh, the California Department of Public Health 
is recommending that we uh, basically uh, cap concrete fill, cap and abandon it, and do another well at this point. Right. Um, so it, it's abandoned, as, as it says it in here, but it's not abandoned to the eye of the regulators. The regulators call it abandoned once you pull out everything out of there and you fill it out with concrete. And it's really abandoned. Right now, it still has a pump on it. It's just not used. Um, and then there's well 17, which is one of those wells that developers built in 2006. And, uh, uh, you know, the hole was built and the well was, uh, the casing was installed and, and they went and there's just a, a tax or what a well that played on top and that's right. what it is. And this is one of those short-term um, uh, improvements that uh, we're working on to, to bring that capacity back into the system. To so there's capacity. three phases to building a well. Uh, the first two phases have already been developed for 17. So the third phase is what uh, we're working on right now. So it's not operational right now? No, no. no. no it's not uh, operational. It has to be designed and constructed. <laughs> and and that, that's where we've got uh, a $1.6 million grant that uh, 1.4 of that money is going towards uh, the, that specific well. In, in addition to that, um, the, let's see, uh, oh, that, and like, like they said, that particular well is, is a well that was uh, basically constructed and designed by a developer driven. And uh, so, so basically we're at the point right now where we're asking the, the, the new property owners uh, to deed over that property mm -hmm. in order for us to develop the well. <coughs> and the reason why we're doing it is because um, no no developer is going to want want to come in at this point and and up front, you know, say two two point three million dollars for full construction and filtration of the well. So and then say and then we tell them we're going to pay them back later. In the other circumstances, they would, but in this particular moment in time, they won't. And the the additional capacity for that will be about 700 and something plus or minus EBUs. Um, and uh, and so uh, that's what we're moving ahead because it'll increase our capacity by quite a bit. And quality is better. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, the, the next slide that we prepared is called water system needs. And that's where we kind of you know, looked at, at um, you know, the recent report what water quality is the system. And, and what um, some of the things that we've already touched on, the short-term needs, the immediate needs that we have, are we all agree on additional capacity. We need new wells. And we have a water quality compliance issue, serious water quality compliance issue of Water 13, um, that is now in production, but it will be shut off once you have enough capacity to meet your maximum data demand. So, um, you know, so that, that compliance issue needs to be corrected there. So those are your short-term, immediate needs that need to be done, corrected now. And the corrective action on 13 is by CDPH is three years. three years. Of course, we're not waiting three years. We're going to address it at the same time that we're trying to address 17. And, uh, well, it's not a label here, but what we call short-term is maybe one to three, one to four years. That's what um, we're calling about short-term needs. And now long-term needs. Um, are, is also additional capacity. We we'll always keep, have to keep chasing that capacity keep, have to keep uh, building uh, some new wells so that we can keep on uh, bringing or growing uh, the city. And also water quality compliance. But now if you notice, there's an, another constituent there on the last, uh, on the long term at the, at the tail end, it's called PCP. And PCP is an organic constituent that is in the water. It's not regulated yet. We know that CDPH is looking at it. We know that regulators are developing an MCL that hasn't been developed yet. They don't know what the limit is going to be, uh, but it's coming. And, and we know it's going to happen be, you know, in about three, four years. It will probably come with a hard limit. And at that point, some of these wells will be out of compliance. And uh, so that's the what the long-term needs is to also look at PCP and how we will address those once the limit comes in, in, into play. In and well number eight, and we're doing TCP treatment, and it's going to be kind of our baseline of, you know, what the costs are, what the operational needs are, uh, and, um, and, and basically just, I, I, I want to call it like a, it's, it's kind of like a pilot, you know, because we are doing treatment there, even though we don't have an MCL limit yet. But it's coming, so we're, we're ahead of the curve. And, 
And so any adjustments we need to make, we'll, we'll make them and we'll learn from eight to make sure that, you know, if we do make a mistake somewhere, we don't, it's not a costly one. And, there, and therefore, um, uh, focusing on well number eight is really going to help us with, because basically TCP is in all of the wells, but at just different, uh, in different degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it a stronger uh, propensity in eight right now? Is that the reason? Uh, well, it's one of our largest producing wells, and the water quality over there is a lot better, and and um, and so and it gives us a good base for us to you know, feed. And it, feel free, anybody, to jump in. You know, any any more info. Well, what is TCP doing to people? What does that do? Oh. It's, I think it's, it's, it's you know the regular it's a known carcinogen like most of the other organics in the water. Um, they just don't know what the MCL is the actual, in the maximum contaminant level is what level would be safe. <coughs> what is the safe so level? we're drinking the water and we don't even know if it's safe, right? Yeah. Uh, so right. They're developing that. I mean, if, if, yeah. they, if they knew for a hard fact what the, the limit would be that it would make you safe, they would put it now. But they're kind of still developing that, that yeah. going through the motions and, and developing just, the level. Yeah, and let me just tell you, as technology increases, it's just like arsenic. Arsenic a few years ago, it was 15 parts per billion. Right now, it's 10 parts per billion. Okay, and I expect that to even go further as technology, because you can't you can't treat something that you don't have the technology to take it out of. And so the same thing with TCP. Just recently, you, we saw the MCL limit. The MCL stands for maximum contaminant level. Just recently came out for Chrome 6, which is an issue that Los Banos has. We, thank God we don't have that over here. But Los Banos has those issues over there, so they have to address that. So uh, expect the, the, the maximum contaminant levels to change on the different uh, uh, constituents that are in the water. But TCP right now, they don't have a solid number. So, but let me give you an example. It, 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 if, you, if you drink it every day, all day, for the next 100 years, you're going to get cancer. Okay? I mean, the, 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 that, that's the work that they're doing to, to find out where, and that's where they put the limit and they say, hey, you can only be exposed this much X. We don't know where it's coming from. TCP? Yeah. Mm -hmm. TCP yeah. is from all the years uh, that, uh, of course, you, you know, you probably know this already, but it's basically the, the pesticide that we okay, use so back in the day. Okay, so things going into the ground. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, sir. Go ahead. So, no, that, that, that's so good. Um, so the, uh, the next slide kind of talks about what, um, what improvements are we looking at in the, in the short term um, for, the, for the south of uh, distribution system. I mean, we, we talked about so just... But well, before we jump to the south, let's talk a little bit about the north and, mm -hmm. and give a, an update okay. on well 16 right. and well 8. Right. No. So the, uh, the, the, the short term improvements on the north, on the north side of town, the north side of the town, um, you see, we, we have relatively good quality water. So that doesn't mean that there isn't things that need to be done in the short term. I mean, well, um, well, eight, it's, it's going, it's undergoing construction right now, and it's going to have a brand new TCP treatment system. Uh, it's probably one of the first ones that are built in the valley, and that's, as Jose said, it's going to be kind of a, a pilot, uh, could be considered kind of a pilot system for the city to understand what the long-term costs of treating that constituent are going to be. Because uh, right now, I mean, we know it's, it's a GAC, it's an it's a acti activated carbon media, mm -hmm. not like a breeder filters. Um, so it's, it's going to be, how, how long does that media last? How, how much is it going to cost to replace it? Um, so that, having that well constructed is going to be a great tool for the city to understand what the long-term costs of that is going to be. And then also, staying in contact with regulators and see, hey, why are you coming? What, what, what does it look like the limits are going to come? so that we know to what level do we have to treat it. Do we have to treat it to non decay Do we have to treat it to midway? What level do we have to treat it to? So that's, that's going to be something that in the short term it needs to be done on the north side of, of, of part of town. And also another thing is well 16, we talked about um, uh, you know, the, uh, having that already has a treatment system on it. Well 16 is one of the most expensive water in the city uh, in terms of cost per gallon because it has arsenic at a concentration that is four times what is found in all these other wells. So if the rest of the wells have concentrations of arsenic between five and ten, well 16 has a concentration of 40. 
that's that, that's really out there. Do we have live? Um, so we we. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know exactly why, but we have a, a pretty uh, good educated idea, I think, as to why it. Uh, and we were kind of. Doing so what you have there didn't explain what's there on the side. Yeah, the, the well is a 400. I'm going to move this because I know I'm going to knock it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you can't see anything now. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. That's right. There, don't put a, you want to hit you in the head. Sorry, don't hit this well. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the recorder. Guys, you can be up. That's not. Anyway, what we did here. Uh, well, 16 is one of your deeper wells in the city. Uh, most of <clears throat> most of your wells are about 300 feet deep. This one is uh, 477 feet deep. So it, it it taps different types of water. There's this big layer of clay that goes across the San Joaquin Valley. It's called the Corcoran uh, clay. So it's at about 300 feet, and it's pretty, pretty thick. So we're pretty sure that uh, some of the uh, areas where you getting water from for this well are actually at or below that that level. Explain the preparation. The preparation uh, yeah. uh, uh, limits there, so that they don't right. get that. So the, the, the way that wells work, you have basically a hole in the ground with the, with the casing, and then there's uh, perforations on the casing, either little louvers or uh, so that lets the water go in. So in this case, you have 10 feet at this depth and another 20 feet at this depth, and so on and so forth, and you have about 40 feet, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty deep, you have 422 to 462. Um, Usually, around here, your worst quality water comes from deeper aquifers or deep, deeper depth, you know, lower depth. So this being one of your deeper wells, and this one having at like over four times the arsenic uh, level that uh, uh, <coughs> the other ones have, so it's pretty good guess it's going to yeah, come, come down. Your maximum level for arsenic is 10. Is 10, and this so one has 42 or 47, and, yeah. so it's way high. So, uh, in addition to this, this well is being uh, treated now, and the media can uh, basically handle 900 gallons per minute of water pumping through there. The well is able to pump, I think, 1,300 gallons per minute. So when you turn that well on, it wants to pump 1,300 gallons. However, to use that treatment media adequately, you have to only pump around 900. That's should be what the media can handle. Uh, to do that, there are several ways of doing that. One, one of the things that we're proposing, this is as we we're actually taking over here a month ago or so, was what's called an orifice and the pipe. You're going to choke the pipe down. So when you do that, you get less flow, but you're still spending as much money in, in power because the motor and everything runs the same way. Uh, and you're reducing the life of your equipment because bearings and seals and, and the machinery doesn't like that because it's kind of like driving your car down the freeway and you floor it and you brake on. So it's, it's kind of like that. Uh, so th there's other ways to mitigate that. One that's called a, a variable frequency drive, which basically modulates the, the speed of the motor and it's based on a bunch of parameters. It's on demand. Whatever you need to do, it kind of does it automatically. And another way to bring that flow uh, back to that 900 around that is to actually trim the impeller. It's like a little fan at the bottom of the well that pumps the, the actual pump, pumps the water. So if you trim those, it pumps less water, it uses less power because there's less load on that motor. So you, so that's another, it's a better way than, than the, uh, the orifice. So we have two, two things here. We have a lot of arsenic and we need to basically slow this well down a little bit in order to, to uh, uh, use that media adequately. So what we were thinking is if we can, uh, uh, if we go down here and investigate the quality of each of these layers here, these perforations, 
and we can isolate the one, the culprit, the big culprit here. If we get one that's got 50 and the other one is 10, 12, you know, that one's going to be the bad one. You can actually isolate that. You can put a piece of pipe here and isolate it. And then it, it will reduce the production of the well because there's less water going in there. But it'll also improve the water quality because you're isolating the bad spots, so to speak. Nice. And if you get really lucky. And reduce the, uh, the media cost. And reduce, right. And reduce the. the but, but one thing that we're checking on um, is to see if, if, if there's any uh, data out there that, that the city possibly did all these things. I'm, I'm talking in about past, in the past years ago. Water quality at the different strata levels. So we're going to check into that. Uh, and, and if that data does exist, then. Basically, it's got to be there. Well, there must be records on that. Yeah. They would certainly be we, we, we did do the study. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, no, normally when you first build the well, that's when you make, you make right. sure that you know what's coming in. And, but, and this is not, it's only what, seven years old, so it's not that old, but we, we really don't. As, as of now, we don't have that data. Uh, worst case scenario, we'll, we'll have to go and do, you know, take the, the, the pump out and then go ahead and do that again. And, uh, so. If, if you're able to isolate, say, this layer here, then you're only reducing your well, your, your capacity by probably 10, 12 percent. Uh, so you're, you're able to really lower the uh, uh, arsenic level there, and uh, you, you can lower the product, you will lower the production of the well, and you'll really extend the life of that uh, uh, treatment media. In there. So, and if, if it happens to be this one, which could very well be, which is the big one for 40 feet, you will lose about 45% of the production. It will bring your well to about, what, 800 or so? So you're a little lower than you really want to be, but it's the next best thing, you know. And, and because you only have 800, then the media will last a lot longer again. Uh, they're, all, they're all kind of correlated. Kind of trade -off. Yeah. I got, I they're got, all trade-offs, yes. I got a question. Yes. You talking about capping off the three thirty? Yeah, four, whichever one whatever. turns out to be bad, right? You know, or what I'm wondering is why couldn't the shaft be shortened instead of capping it off and bringing the shaft, the shortening your shaft would bring it up higher. Because these, the water still the pressure, raising. the water still in there. You know, the water yeah, level, the water, the water still level is up here somewhere. Yeah, well, I'm getting at is would that pressure of that water bring that? Yes, because yeah, your pump is not way down here. It pumps some, I don't know exactly where it's at, but yeah, it'll yeah, suck but the whole thing up. The, the whole yeah, column will yeah, come but, up. Yeah. Yeah, because regardless of where you yeah. uh, the, the, block it, the, the water goes in yeah, like this. So yeah, I understand yeah. that part. The pump doesn't go all the way down, the pump is all on top. Yeah. Just oh, it's all the way up there? The pump yeah, is up here because somewhere. you're talking about the impeller down the bulb. there. No, no, that's not no, 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 the impeller's not down okay. here. All right. Mm -hmm. The bulb, these are turbine pipes, uh, these multi-stage turbine pumps, and they're somewhere so, up. So somewhere. anyways, uh, so this is what we're looking at, well 16. Well 16, if we stay as is, uh, the reason we mention all this is because you always want to do continuous improvement. So right now, uh, the... the what's being designed, what's designed and, and, and what's going to treat, et cetera, et cetera, is going to produce clean water. However, you always want to reduce any uh, uh, media cost because the media cost, the more you use well 16, of course, the media is only going to last X amount so of time long. and then you're yeah. going to have to replace it. And that's extra capital that we have to inject. Mm -hmm. So we're always going to look at each well and look at you know, how it's all going to tie together and where we can save money. So if you have more questions on 16, let us know, but we'll move on to the Yeah, I mean, I could talk about it for a long time. Good question about the flow rate. You said it's pregnant right now. Yeah, it's designed for 1,300. Right. Right. How does 1,300 fare compared to other wells that have it? It's slightly bigger than your average one. I think your average one's like 1,100 or something, yeah. somewhere in there. So it's a little bigger than the average one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But just to recap so you understand, well 16 with the, the absorption media that is being presented for that. It's it's limited limited to nine, so you have to choke it down somehow. Right, right. You have to so, so you're losing a little bit of production right. on that one. 
So that's why well 17 is of more importance. And we're also already looking at well 18, because you always want to have a safety factor, a cushion, uh, if you will. You never want to take it all the way to the, to the edge. Yeah. That, that's not a good plan. Yeah, and, and the Department of Health makes sure that you have a redundancy. That's why when they ask to make these NDDs, demands to take out your biggest well and all of that, so that there is a cush there. They don't want you all of a sudden to be right at the verge of yeah. not being able to meet. Jose, uh, on well 16, isn't that the one the media can be recycled on? Regenerated, you mean? Yeah, regenerated. whatever you want to call it and be. Well, it's it's a, it's an absorption uh, it's an absorptive type of media, and uh, if I remember correctly, we'll let I think that out. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's your it's, thing. It's, yeah, the, the media on, on well sixteen when you use it's like a sponge, right? Like you know, so yeah. arsenic goes. It was one of those that you talked about, or somebody did about recycling or cleaning it up and. And right. reusing it. Right. So when the, when the sponge gets full, when all that media gets, you know, cannot absorb any more arsenic, then it has to be removed. Right. That gets removed, new media gets put in, and then with that media that is uh, disposed of, um, you can either dispose of it or they can take it to a place where they regenerate it. And basically That's they wash, okay. they wash That's that media one. and they, they get that arsenic out of the media and then it is it, back in service or it, it can be put back in service uh, on the next on the next cycle. Um, so that's that's the type of that's, media that. That's what I was wondering. If that was the so well. the, it's recyclable. So, so the goal, yeah. the goal of this of this project will not will be to um, maybe reduce that concentration. The goal is to bring that concentration of well 16 to what the other city wells are producing, mm -hmm. like yeah. between five and ten. Yeah. We're not going to get down to zero. We're not going to, no. you know. Uh, we're not you know, very optimistic that if we are just like we are with the other city walls, like around 10, you know, the capacity of that response now is like four times more. So right. now they're placing the no, media we're talking one about year. the price now. of this stuff, and that's why I want oh, the other people to know that wasn't aware of it. I thought this was the one that was being used. Okay, thanks a lot. Right. So okay, uh, any more questions? Okay, one more. Yeah, yeah, one more. Could you please, like, list the different methods of slowing down the production so it Sure. Makes that 900, um, like was it 900 gallons per minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the three methods. Now, yeah. and we need to go down to say not approximately 900. Yeah, the, the what are the different methods, there's, there's and which one. ones would, which the, ones are actually or the best? Orifice, which just basically a plate in the, in, mm -hmm. the, in the discharge with a hole in it. So that's an orifice. Which is not recommended. And, and that's the <laughs> least. It's desirable. a restrictor. Yeah, it's a restrictor. It's, a, it's like it physically choking it down. Okay. And then, uh, and, and, and then, and then, in terms of uh, operation and maintenance, it's a nightmare. So that's not one that we're ready. Variable frequency drive VFD. That's just a piece of equipment that controls the the uh, speed of that motor. So, if you need to bring it, you can force it to do whatever you want, or you can tie it to a SCADA system and it'll operate based on a bunch of parameters. You know, it's very versatile. And the other, and the other one is trim and powers. What is it called? Trim what? Impellers. Okay. Trim impellers, and that's you know at the bottom of each, each these pumps they have a multi. I'm not a big drawer. That's okay. Director. There's all these things in here that that are like little fans that pump. So what's the most advantageous then? Uh. One, one, of, one, one of the two bottom ones, oh, yeah. 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 depending yeah. on yeah. what we find mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so this, this, this one, you're going to spend the same amount of power, and, and your equipment, your machinery, your equipment is going to last a little, not quite as long, because it's put more stress on it as you operate. This, this one here is the, the highest tech one, gives you a lot of versatility, uh, you can then put Put it together with SCADA and you know, tie it to the control. It allows you to control thing. the system remotely. The whole system, you. yeah. So th this is the fanciest one, and this oh, is the a most not expensive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That would be the most expensive. Yeah. It's the Cadillac, right? That that is yeah. The, the, well, not the, necessarily. The whole, but the thing is, <laughs> you, whatever you spend up front, you recoup sometime in yeah, the in the right. Right. So that, that, it's all cost-benefit, cost-benefit, cost-benefit. 
Any other questions on 16? Yeah, we'll move on to the next round. Okay, All right, next thank one. you, Mark. Mm -hmm. And, and we, um, just to add, I mean, and that the option or the, or, of these two uh, will depend on, you know, if we find out that, you know, if we find out that the, the strata that is producing the arsenic is down here, and you end up blocking all these 40 feet, um, now your well production, you know, how how far do you have to slow it down, and that will maybe depend on you know which one you go to. Because in a variable frequency drive, you can it's just basically you're slowing down the motor. But if so much, you can slow it down before it doesn't turn anymore or it doesn't pump anymore. So it will depend on that. One. So those are the improvements, the short term improvements on on the north side, which as you see are more like. Like Jose said, more like optimization. Let's do things better. Let's see how we can, you know, cut costs on, on, the, on, the, on those wells. So when you say short term, you're not talking about this being a long term soft solution. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about activities or, or improvements or, or work or tasks that we're going to be doing in the wow. next one to three years. But for, you know, no, they, whatever improvements are there are going to be for the, yeah, long -term, for, for the long term. But yeah, but there are things that are going to be implemented in place in the ground within the next one to three years. Because um, there is other improvements like a centralized drilling system or a, that requires a lot more planning, environmental, things that can be done in one year. <coughs> so these are things that can be done in one year and it can be, uh, uh, you know, they can be implemented in, in one year. Then on the on the south part of town, that's when we where we uh, really tackle those uh, the, the needs of of the system. Um, there is the just missed it. <laughs> So, um, David, you, you yeah, asked questions that you wanted to talk about what's more to share about the pipe. Oh, yeah. pipe. Okay, yeah. let's go. Yeah, we'll so, talk, yeah. so, we're going to talk about that. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and uh, kind of intro into that. Okay, so this is a this is a decision as as the policymakers of whether or not you, you guys want to move in that direction. So, well, number eight has the 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 T and the capability of being able to pipe into it. So right now, you're going to decide whether you're going to address or, or you're going to treat for TCP treatment even though you have <coughs> not use the L limit, okay? And then add the cost of the, of the, of the actual well, uh, I mean the, uh, the, the pipeline to get over there. Or address, so we're painting the entire picture so that you guys uh, <coughs> can decide what is more important to address, especially because TCP is not, uh, there's not an MCL in it yet, okay? And so it would be nice if you, if you, if you use eight as a, as a uh, pilot so that you can make adjustments because you really don't know where the regulators are gonna say that you need to put it at non-detect or if there's something in between. But, uh, but that is on the table. But we're gonna talk about all the other stuff and that way you guys can look at it as a community. Yeah, because uh, 14 was the one that had the most TCP. Yeah, I think so. It's one of the highest ones. But those are the highest. Right. And uh, one of the things that, um, I don't know if, if, if when you came in, you know, we talked about the water system needs and what, what is needed um, now as, as immediate short term needs, one, two things that can be correct in one to three years for capacity and water quality, sort of arsenic and manganese. And there's a long term need that we know is TCP compliance. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, we know that that's coming in the next two, three years, and that's where. Uh, maybe the long-term <coughs> efforts uh, for well, that. You know, we got that settlement with the piece. Right. Yeah, the mm -hmm. 14 is the one that has the most. And then uh, I think it's 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that's... Um, and um, so we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to that so that you guys... We'll explain everything and then we'll come back to that one because it's an important piece so that you guys all understand uh, what that is. Right. So on the, on, the, uh, on the south part of the, of the system, the two um, short-term improvements are to add capacity, which is to complete that well 17. Well 17 out of the three phases that, that Jose was mentioning, the test well was done, which is when you know they go and they do an exploration and see if there's water there, and that was done. 
and then there was the production hall was built with a casing and all that. And now the third phase, which is to put the pump in there and put the uh, coordination equipment and all the electrical, and, and that well requires treatment because it has a high level of manganese, so put the treatment system in. That is what is not in, in, in uh, it's not there yet. And completing that in the short term, we'll, we'll bring in an additional plus or minus 1,200 gallons a minute capacity. We don't know until we develop that well again. Uh, we don't know what that capacity is going to be, but it indicates that what, what we've yeah, seen on the initial development, it maybe well. should be a good producing well. It should be one of your best producing wells, maybe 1,200 gallons yeah. a minute of additional capacity. That will provide you know, ample capacity for growth, new, new connections, and, and, and it will produce better quality water because it will have treatment for iron and manganese, and, and it will also reduce the, the, the arsenic because it has a little bit of arsenic, not above the MCL, but a little bit of arsenic. Okay, so this is where well 15 comes into the picture. So well 15, as you know, and we could look at uh, that map over there. Can you point to where 15 is? 15? Oh, no, no, the point with your, your right. handy dandy right. pointer. 15. Oh, that's right. You guys can see it on there. Okay. Yeah. Well 15 is over right. here. Okay. So well 15 is, is a well that's not looped. It's kind of standalone. It's one of our least productive wells. Okay. But it has, uh, it has compliance issues. So this is where we're, we have to look at uh, whether or not we, we treat, we do filtration and treat all of that and bring it up to compliance. Uh, or do we, uh, that's a well that we might just not use intermittently or abandon uh, all entirely uh, since, since 17 is going to pick up some of that. And then that's why we have to look at 18. You know, so it, it all comes down to, to costs, okay? Uh, so we talk about well 15 and what are the two constituents that we have to address there? Uh, well, well, well 15, it has uh, uh, primarily manganese. Um, that's, it's out of compliance. Which is a secondary MC at maximum contaminant level, which is aesthetic, not... Uh, that is a health issue. I mean, you can drink water with manganese all day long, and you're fine, and everybody it will stain your clothes, or it will... Have brown water in the toilets, and, and that's that's why. It, 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 that's it, it's two S. But the manganese doesn't really necessarily smell. But yeah, it, it's a static issue, just like a smell. But we but we have to treat for it. But you have to treat for it. But um, but you know, the Department of Public Health obviously worries more about your primary constituents, which are those that can have a health impact or a health effect, or sort of the primary ones. But and and manganese is is, a, is an issue that. Uh, affects a lot of our businesses in the area and along with the residents because especially on the poultry side you know, you know uh, unless we can sell red chickens <laughs> so red or brown yeah. it varies on the day you want, you want, you want so, red meat or brown meat <laughs> dark <laughs> so that's uh, uh, and then your well 13 is the one that has the, the, the arsenic, the arsenic problem. And that's where um, the second uh, short-term improvement on that, on that south part of the system is to address that, uh, to address that uh, out of compliance issue with well 13 so that we can maintain that in production. There is a compliance order already from the Department of Public Health that mandates the city to have that well um, either abandoned or, or, or correct the problem by your 2016 April. So are we using it right now? Uh, the well is being used. Correct. Right. It's being used. Um, even only it's out of compliance. It is even, and the only reason it's being used is because um, with, the, with well 16 being out of service, the city was not able to meet your maximum day demand. The city's maximum day demand. So uh, CDPH allowed the city to put that back in service um, for a period of time with the, with the hard date on it so that you would actually have it the problem corrected treatment installed by by a certain date but yeah that, that well is now is now being used yeah, to, meet, well, to meet the maximum once the maximum. 17 comes online right. they may actually ask you to speak at all and the arsenic level in this well is right above the MCL it's nothing like well 16 that is at 40 this well it's been compliance is based on the average running average of the last four quarters so it's been running around 9, 11, then it goes back down to 9, then it goes back, you know, so it, it's been, and it recently, it was just recently in the first quarter of this year that it became, you know, it was the fourth time that it was at right at 11, right above that. that, that How did this 13? Uh, 13 is about 1,300 gallons. 
Oh, how deep? 300, 300. 300 and... Right at 300. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> wouldn't it be something worth looking to see if, the, if one of those things can be turned off? Uh, it's you not know, that much on, yet on that one. Yeah, that that's what goes back to what the Max said. Of the the, the magnitude of the problem. I mean, like it, it, the, the likelihood on, on 16 that is four times the level that you can bring it down. Yeah, to, yeah it's like, like way... 12, 12, 13, I mean, yeah, it would be uh, too much wishful thinking that it's going to yeah. come down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not trying to hit it zero. No, no. Hit it. And you may be, you know, all the wells, like well 15 is a nine, well 12 is a nine. Well, 17 is at 6.6, uh, but it hasn't that's been found much. That's a few years, a couple years ago, with 6.6. So, we'll need to redevelop that problem. Right? That seems to be the number in that area. Well, 15 is a little over 9. So nine in that area, seven. that's about the normal. Yeah, between level. 7 yeah. and so 10. So if they're all hidden, then you're not going to, yeah. No, they all get to the same You're not level. likely to do much. Yeah. So. Jose, uh, that location of well 15, isn't that where the new development is coming in? Yes. Around that area, and you're going to need you. So you're going to need all that. Okay. Well, that's why that's why you can't look at this just isolated. You have to look at the entire system. So, if if the cost because we have a 10.2 MCL for arsenic over there, and then you have manganese, okay, and it's one of your lowest producing wells. So, does it make sense, doing the full cost benefit analysis? to go ahead and treat that, and on top of that, we would have to buy additional property, and that's the most expensive property, because it's uh, yeah. commercial, okay, uh, to bring it up. So we we're looking at that and saying, hey, should we just go ahead and try to make up that capacity somewhere else, where you don't have to treat as much, where you don't have to address the, have to pay for uh, land, et cetera, et cetera. So those are things that we're looking at in, at, at comprehensively, so yeah. it, it might turn out that we don't do anything on well 15 and basically uh, uh, move on to another one. Well, 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 I was thinking, well, if, if it could be part of development fee type thing for the well, developer. Well, even with that, you got a great idea there. I know where you're going. We would transfer the benefit area has to be paid by those being benefited. Mm -hmm. So whatever the benefit is. They're going to get water because the system is the same distribution system gets to everybody. But that is will be transferred, let's say, to 17 or might be transferred to 18. 18. They're going to get their water no matter what. It's just that why sink money into good money into some bad yeah, dollars? Do you understand that? I hear you. Good, good, good. Did you just so that, it has a, uh, 15 has a treatment system on it now? No, no, that's not but, but that's part of more of the long-term uh, improvements that we're talking about of what do we do with well 15, um, being that it has manganese, which is not a health uh, pressing issue, so it's an aesthetic issue. Do we uh, install treatment there? Do we uh, you know, spend all that money and effort in, into that well? Or do we allocate whatever money the developers would pay for that treatment on that, we allocate it elsewhere in the system to where we can maybe redevelop that well 10 um, and put maybe a, a, a centralized uh, treatment. Remember, a, a part of the long-term needs of the system is TCP treatment, and that's what we're looking at for year five and above and beyond. Um, so when we start looking at long-term, now you're going to have one well, well 17, that is going to have good water, so you have treatment. You're going to have well 13 that's going to have good water because it had treatment. And then you may or may not have well 15, but you may have well 10 that it will be another source of, of water. I can tell you that it's going to be good water because in the area it's all, it's all borderline arsenic. So um, we don't know what the water quality would be, but I have to bet it would be probably borderline. But you can blend it with other wells in the area and now bring it back down. and and combine all those water sources and treat for TCP that we know is coming. And do TCP at a central location to where you can blend all those levels. One well will be higher, one well will be lower. You can achieve a middle point and treat to the level that the regulators ask us to do. And we don't know what that level is yet. It may be 0.25, it may be 0.10, it may be whatever that level is. But, but we, can, we can do it by blending and, and gaining that advantage of, of one, having a central location, and two, um, being able to mo 
equalize that or reduce that level by blending the different wells. Yes. What do you estimate the cost to be to uh, uh, refurbish well number 10? Uh, we, we have not developed that, that just, cost yet. Just the ballpark. You're talking one three, one five. I don't think we're talking about refurbishment. I think we're talking about a new well next to it. A couple million dollars. Yeah, a couple million. Yeah, million. So it's rather than say ten, it, we'll say it, well eighteen. It would be the one we call okay. eighteen, which right. is the same area. So as compared to to fixing well fifteen, do you have an estimate for that? Uh, we, I don't have an estimate for that, but if I had to, you know, the, the well thirteen is estimated about one point six million. Well fifteen, it's about um, it's a little bit less capacity. So, about a million. So, by understanding where you're going with this, then basically, what you, if I'm hearing it right, is it might be an option to shut 13 and 15 down, or 15 for sure. Go in and, and refurbish 10, and then put the centralized water system over there where right. 10 is, and where 17 or 18 is going to be. Right. That's what you're recommending. So, it may cost a little bit more, but in the long run, what you're saying is you're going to have a lot better quality of water for the years to come. Right. It'll cost Why don't less you do a little run. schematic on the on the whiteboard so folks can see it? Uh, a little bit better, and a uh, very good question um, and comments, uh, which, but he'll, he'll do it with quick hair. So we have 99, like that. We have, uh, well, 15 here, and we have, and you know, well, 15, then we have, well, 17, and then we have, uh, well, uh, 12 down here, and then we have, well, 10 here. So what we're talking about is, um, you know, in, and these these wells have just to give you an idea. This I think this well is like 9.9 .9 in arsenic. And the limit is 10. This well is 11, so it's above the limit. This well we don't know it's out of service. This well is um, 6.6. 6. 6. But we know that that can potentially be higher once we start pumping it, because it has only been pumped once when it was constructed. And then well 12 is around 9, so it's just all borderline. Um, so, so let me just stop you on 15. 15 is 9.9. .9. You should just consider that being over the limit. Because, yeah. I mean, literally, you're there. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's just, you're in compliance, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's right. It, it may be out of compliance tomorrow. I mean, you, that, those levels have been creeping up. Um, so the, the, uh, the idea is, uh, that's it, uh, you know, once, if you put a treatment system on well 13 and you bring that 11 down to zero and you have well 17 and you have a treatment system in there because you're building that up and you bring them down to zero. Now you have two good sources of water in terms of, of arsenic. Now this well number 10, we're going to destroy it, next to it we're going to build well 18. And then here we build a centralized treatment facility where you can bring water from 13, you can bring water from 17, you can bring water from 12, and um, you can bring water from 12, and um, and and blend it. Now you have well 18, as I said. I mean, if once you drill it, it's probably not going to be zero arsenic. It's it going to be, be more nine. like anywhere <laughs> between seven and ten, because yeah. right? that's where all your wells are. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to guess something, so you have two good sources, two borderline sources, but if you blend them here into a big tank, now you get a good, um, a better quality water, and now we address the other long-term needs, which, which was called, you know, PCP. Now we treat for that. And, and you're building additional uh, additional uh, storage space. Uh, and yeah, right. right. So you will have a storage yeah. volume there, and then you will have a treatment system for PCP, and um, depending on what, uh, you know, the number of uh, the, the number it is that the regulators develop. If the regulators tell us, oh, we have to treat it to 0.1, and we, we know how many vessels we need, how many, how much treatment we need, or how much can we blend. Um, so that's, you know, the idea of having a centralized, and now 15 is kind of out of the way, and as Jose said, it's a low provision well, yeah. and uh, land is expensive over there to buy them, so does it make sense to spend the money here? Does it make sense to just spend the money to treat some of these other wells and, or build this well 18 and and focus on this part of, of now, uh, where, where well 10 is uh, Richie you can no, that's fine. jump in no. where well 10 is is at Arcanium Park and you notice that that back section the people don't go back there uh, it's pretty much everything in the front so we have uh, 
the area to add more filtration back there. And in addition to that, uh, you, you, you have the distribution already goes there. So, uh, Richie, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, does the State Resources Board, do they judge you on your limits per well, or would they judge you on your total limits coming out of your centralized water treatment facility? Well, not out of the central, out of what which, you which, take, which takes everything out of, out of play, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, because right now you're, you're going to be zero, zero, and maybe nine, which means you're going to be down to you probably have five, five, five over or there. five and a half, yeah. something like so that. So this way, we can, try and do with, with, with two treatment systems, we I can got avoid got another two I by got blending. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because right now, if, if you are out of compliance out of one well, yeah. you have to shut it off. No, that's what I was getting And this gives if, if not, you're looking at going to have to shut one of the two of them down rather exactly. than being able to do something. Exactly. Right. exactly. Right. 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 right on. And, and this well should be a good well producing well, well in terms of capacity. No, well, should probably even well, blend well, that well, down sure. further. Well, you're going to you're blend 12 out, which we're going to do. Exactly. We're going to blend 12, and then we'll just blend 18. Now, question in the back. Yeah, just a quick question. I mean, it seems like it's, it's good that we have solution to uh, the TCP isolate and manage problem. We can tackle these. We can have these levels down. The only challenge that I see and I want you guys to speak on is uh, the capacity, right? I mean, because this involves, you know, crossing off well 15, crossing off well 10, even we're having... Well 10 is gone already. Gone already, right? Gone, yeah. And having well 15. So, I mean, uh, that's another factor that you have to take into account with that, right? Mm -hmm. But, but what, well, well 17 was not taken onto those numbers. So well 17 should add about 400 gallons of capacity, which is about 500 new units. So that should address their short-term growth of the city. And, 18 is in the and, and then 18 will be another source of water on top of that. So now we're talking about maybe 1,500 additional homes or ADUs or um, that would be about. Okay, good. So we've got that factor. And yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. These two wells are not counted on that seven thousand. If you take fifteen out, you put you have seventeen in and eighteen in. Yeah. And of course, seventeen is way bigger than fifteen in terms of capacity. Right. And the other question is: this system of centralized, you know, of water treatment and then distribution is that also uh, done by any of our neighboring cities or, or any? Well, yeah. Uh, well, centralized uh, uh, treatment, TCP, given that TCP is, is a new constituent that is not being regulated yet. Okay. So, although there is a, there's a settlement fund and there's, you know, co chemical companies are paying for that, cities are holding on to that money because they're not being asked to uh, spend it yet. Um, they don't have to, there's not a limit, and we don't know what we have to treat it. So, Spending it, spending it, all that money, and later on knowing that maybe there's a, a cheaper system. There's a lot of efforts to be going in that technology to treat the TCP because that's a big problem, or finding out that the limit now is higher, or finding out. So there isn't. I don't think there is a lot of TCP treatment up and down the valley yet. But now centralizing all those all those wells, it makes a lot of sense. And yeah, centralizing treatment is getting yeah. used. Also, while yeah. we're talking about changing technology, you know, we're using absorption media right now. You were mentioned earlier, prior to you plus coming in, about the coal aggregate. Population yeah, you want to show all the technology that changes. That's but that's, that's for arsenic, that's not yeah. for TCP. I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, you said, I'm talking about how technology changes. Right, they evolve right. along. Actually, in the centralized uh, box that you drew that's going to do a TCP refrigerant, can it also treat for arsenic and other contaminants? It's, it, their, their treatments are completely different. The TCP treatment is it's a granulated activated right. carbon system. It's kind of like your breeder filter. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> but I wonder if you can put, put something in series. I mean, oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. And you can do that. So that's the benefit of having a centralized yes. system. Right. always improve the quality there. Mm -hmm. Right. You can, uh, yeah, you can build yeah. it all around. In addition to that, and you've got good thinking there, in addition to that, you, you have the operators going to one location one rather than running around. Mm -hmm. yeah. to, and then when you yeah. do the introduce SCADA system and, and all these other uh, components, the same thing. So, yeah, you're thinking in the right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does simplify operation and maintenance somewhat. Right. Right. And not to mention, you know, you can blend in good quality versus that. It gives you more versatility. Right. You're going to deal with the TCP issue, but, but people, these are working not more. You're going to get the manganese out of the water. Right. <laughs> you know what? Like, even when I live no in more this town here a while back, <laughs> people are tired of seeing brown, brown water. Brown water. Yeah. Brown water. It's, yeah. And, and so yeah. what happened? If you can close 15, we would solve most of our manganese issues in town. That, 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 that's probably yeah, right. it. That's why that See, what, what happened? Let me just let me just tell you. <coughs> when when you have when you introduce um, chlorine into the system, okay, 
that creates okay that, that the oxidation okay with some of that the manganese in there and therefore you get some of the stuff that sloughs off in the, in the system. But we know that the major source of manganese is coming from uh, 115. What 15? And what's the next biggest one? Um, well, 15 has some manganese. So I know, but, line. but uh, uh, well, 11. Well, that's the best manganese. Yeah, well, 11 is a good producer of manganese. Yeah. So in terms, in terms <laughs> of uh, <laughs> the power is a measure of the power. Yeah, it's at 47. I was doing 47. Doing doing <laughs> Arsenic treatment <laughs> and, and what it costs. It is to you know what you have a well 16 is is what we uh. We talked about is like a sponge, right? And, and it is, it's, it's a filter vessel, and it has, you know, your water comes in through the top, and it has some uh, absorptive media, and uh, so your arsenic gets caught, it's absorbed into this media, and once it's full, you know, it comes out of the bottom. Once it's full, you have to go in there, open that vessel, take all that media out, and dispose of it, and put new media in. Um, and, and it, it, there's kind of assortive medias that are selective of, of certain constituents, and they absorb some and they let pass some. So they, they're, and this is a special media for 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 arsenic. Now there's other um, draw draw another one on the side for the granulated yeah. radical. So now there is another uh, type and uh, of media that uh, that are called um, it's, this process is called coagulation filtration. Uh, and coagulation filtration, what it does is it it is still um, has it's sort of the same concept, you know. You just have the same vessel; it looks just the same. Has a different media on it, right? Now, this media, this on this on this media, this me, these medias are used to also treat iron and manganese. And what they found is that when you oxidize your iron and your manganese by adding chlorine, uh, you form those those precipitates of, of, of iron and manganese. That your arsenic, uh, your arsenic tends to Bind with them, bonus. You get, you get closer to them, and then you you take them out altogether. Wow! Unfortunately, you don't have any iron in your wine. <laughs> <laughs> so well, what they so what 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 they do to that, so well, they that is they, they add an artificial sort of iron, which is ferric, and now you know the arsenic gets bound to this ferric and it gets taken out. Now instead of being absorbed by this media, what it gets it it starts forming a they're plugging it because these precipitates are like minuscule particles. They're actually uh, mm -hmm. particles that are uh, forming on the media. So every once in a while, every day or every uh, two days, you have to backwash this filter and you backwash and that backwash water goes into your sewer system and goes back to your to your uh, plant. So you don't have the, the disposing of that media. And these medias, they usually last between 10 and 15 years. And the reason why you have to replace those medias is because um, eventually with the backwashing effect and the agitation that goes on, those medias start breaking you know, starts breaking down and it starts becoming finer and it starts washing off and so it wants ten, fifteen years you have to So that has to be done on a daily basis? <coughs> a backwash? Yeah. Yeah, th these filters are also backwash. Wow. But maybe every longer term you have to you have to backwash. But these filters are backwash but that way you can you can um, uh, by by uh, by having this you don't have to replace replace the media you have the cost of the chemicals but you don't have the cost of replacing the media okay. now at the levels that you have on, that, on these wells you're talking about replacing the media every year if you were to pump this well at full capacity 24/7 um, you would have to replace the media in there every year and the cost of replacing the media is about two hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. so it's it's not a cheap thing. Um, uh, on top of that, you when you have to get rid of the media, <laughs> it's considered hazardous. So you, you have to go this you gotta displace that to somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Whereas for for the quantization filtration, you can dispose of the backwashing In the to your sewer. sewer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, so these are the different uh, technologies. So for for well thirteen <coughs> We will be looking at, at, at coagulation filtration uh, in the system. Okay. Those are. Uh, uh, those, I think we, we pretty much covered your you know your long, your short term needs, then your long term talking about maybe looking into a centralized uh, treatment in the uh, in the uh, in the distribution system in the south of the distribution system, 
And that, the thing, the reason why the long term is because we can't plan for that in a year or in two years. That the, developing a, a centralized treatment is something that is, is, takes longer. It takes more, um, you know, much more, more effort. So, um, uh, Gopal, you have a question? Yeah. One of the things you may want to mention, going back to the TCA when Roll Eight gets mm -hmm. up and running, that there's plans to get Roll Fourteen piped over to Eight. Well, that's right. We haven't yeah, talked we, about the long-term improvements on the yeah, north but side. But that's. That way, instead of putting a filter on 14, this is going to take it over to 8, which already has filters that put all there, so you get two, uh, two uh, rolls pumped and uh, cleaned up at the same time. Right. So the, um, the it's a lot cheaper to run a pipe than it is to build yeah. a roof. <coughs> right. And that goes along to the same thing that was in the south part, is on the north part, what can we do to centralize things and, and you know, take advantage of that, uh, of, of the blending of the, of the water. And that would be to develop a centralized treatment. And uh, perhaps well, eight seems to be the reasonable location because we already have a, a, a treatment system there. There's room. There's it's been designed to be expanded for that sole same purpose. So um, if in the long term, once that that limit comes into place, once we understand what the costs of treating are, the, uh, combining some of these wells into one location, it will it will make. Well, yeah, but keep in mind that TCP, when it, so if you have, if you're treating a thousand gallons over here and you're treating a thousand gallons here, you're introducing another thousand, that's two thousand, so you have to make adjustments for more mm -hmm. filtration. It's, the same filtration you have is not going to yeah. absorb the other thousand. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but you're taking advantage of the fact that you've got property and, and some other... Uh, yeah, and, you, and, and you're not paying for new plumbing and yeah. you, know, right. you continue to use the same right. plumbing. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, you're going to replace more media, but even if you had two different wells, you, you would replace it over a long period of time, but you still replace the double the media. So that doesn't really change. Yeah, right. yeah and then you have a little bit of redundancy in case hopefully no, no, no other constituent pops up yeah. wow. <laughs> that you have to treat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think um, that pretty much covers the improvements, and, and the next slide kind of moves into what now how do we pay for all this, right? <laughs> we know what we have to do, but now we need to start looking at funding sources. So for those short-term improvements that we talked about, the Well 17, the news is, you know, we got the city just received a community development law grant program. They received $1.4 million on, on a grant to develop, to construct that Well 17. So that, that short-term is, is, uh, is covered. Um, and then there is a drinking water the state revolving fund that the city submitted some applications about a couple of months ago. The state opened up the list to be included for new projects, and the city submitted several projects. And uh, let me uh, talk about a little bit about that. Um, you might recall at the beginning of the year, uh, that, uh, Mayor Pertin, who Paul Semra, and Mayor uh, Espinosa and I, we went up to Washington D.C. We met with uh, EPA along with other agencies. And uh, we, uh, we we were uh, told by some of the staffers that there were because we were basically asking for money. What would you want to be seen in this area? <laughs> so and they said, well, you know, there is money, and uh, we gave it to the state. And we're like, uh, okay. And so they gave us additional information. Well, the, the, the state of California has been sitting on uh, 455 million dollars for safe drinking water. Okay. And so uh, we, we, of course, went to our congressman and went to Senator Canella and some of these other legislators, and they started shaking, you know, the tree. And, um, and so bottom line is that uh, we need some of that funding, and we you know it's, you know, it's going to be competitive, and so we're doing everything we can, and we've submitted three applications uh, so that we can have access to some of that funding. So when, when, when the state receives those applications, they read them and they look at you know, how severe the problem is and then they rank it, right? They say, well, this is and they rank them in an alphabetic order A through Z. And uh, they, they usually consider that down to category G are all, but above, they're all fundable projects. They're all projects that are gonna be within the pot of money that they have. And the good news is that um, uh, the, one of those applications that uh, call for treatment for well 13, I think it called for treatment for well 11 and well 15, it was like about $8.8 .8 million, is in category G, so it's in those fundable projects. 
um, and the city should be uh, receiving uh, an invitation, I think, to, once they, they rank him, then they invite those A through G projects, they invite them to submit an application. And some of them will submit and some of them will not, but um, they'll, everybody will submit and then the process will start to fund us. So that's, that's another source of money that is available uh, right now. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, again, the idea is to basically get, our, get ourselves out of the red uh, and uh, keep the rates you know, low. And so we're also looking at, uh, you guys are familiar, when I talked about this a little bit at the very beginning, is the Irwin process and, and the funding that, unless you're part of it and you adopt the plan and you're in there and you submit for certain projects, uh, then you'll be uh, eligible to uh, compete for that other funding. And my recommendation to the city is to continue to look at CDBG funding uh, in the future. Uh, that I, that, that's really good money that you can use for anything, but right now we all know that this is the most critical area, and so we'll, we're going to continue to recommend that we go after funding for uh, this type of infrastructure needs, and so we'll go after more money, again, uh, to help uh, defray some of these costs. And our citizens need to share in that somewhat, too. We need sure, to no, no, un under understood, uh, yeah. but uh, you'll see the overall picture as we move along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because for long term, we need to have more money coming in on the regular. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, and not only that, to your point, um, the, there, there's, there's certain grant funding that's out there that unless you are uh, swimming, I mean, you know, not sinking, but swimming, they won't give you, they're going to throw good money in back. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, of course there is some of that. But, but we're trying to find that really good balance. So, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. The, the, and the third sort, uh, source of, of funding that we are, have identified here is that TCP settlement fund, which is about, you know, about $9 million. Or, and that's a, a source of money that is also available there for some of these short-term projects, like well, eight, that $1.9 million, and some for the long-term, if yeah. we were to just build that pipeline. Mm -hmm. Well, it is TCP removal, so that's mm -hmm. what the money is for. That's what the money is for. And in any case, also, it's got like well, 14 got TCP. So we'll use that money for those. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so this is something. Uh, this is a good segue. Thank you, for Paul. Uh, where you all have to think about. Okay. So, and 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 so so you have, so you have some really uh, uh, critical needs everywhere, but then uh, you have a little bit of uh, leeway in terms of time because TCP is not regulated yet but you're still addressing it because you have a, a pilot program, which is well number eight, all right? And then you have uh, capacity issues, so that, that's what we're addressing, 17, 13, and 18. So, okay, so do you want to use that money and, and start treating TCP for well number 14 and well number whatever other well you want to do that and start uh, treating that because that's the, not only is it the, the treatment, but then there's a cost for filtration, okay? Or would you uh, use some of that funding to address some of these other needs you need first, but put a mechanism in there where, where you're actually borrowing the money, but you're paying it back in order to treat TCP once you have everything going the, in the direction that you, you need to go. Now that we have an MCL limit and we have a, a, our arms around the cost. Or just do that, but that, that's not what we recommend because Again, TCP right now, there is no MCL limit, and, and you really want to take the kinks out out of the, 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 your first well, which is well number eight, okay? Because in the future, we know that we have to treat all of them anyways. And so, and so you're, not, you're, you're, you're not eliminating the, the funding, you're just uh, using it to address some of your other needs and then paying it back. And you can do that. Of course. You can. Yes. Did you, uh, you get the MCL about, you know, the MCL for TCP, but they didn't give us $9 million because it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a bad that, thing. That, that, that's, a, and that's what I'm saying. This is a policy decision. This is, this is a, as policymakers, you guys are going to make this decision. What we're saying is, okay, you have these needs here, okay? And we're not saying that these are more important than these. It's just that this, you have a, right now we're, we're being squeezed from all directions. Where can we have a little breathing room? 
or the breathing room is with TCP because you don't have a, 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 a it's not regulated yet and you don't really know where you need to treat it. Okay? So but but we know it's important and we've already moved forward on well eight and, and, yeah. and that's gonna be the pilot. And and one of the things could be because it's gonna be repaid basically you're giving yourself a loan. What percent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you can go to the bank and get a loan mm -hmm. and then give that 4% to the bank or you can loan it to yourself and pay yourself the interest. Right. So do we give to the bank or do we keep it within the house? Right. What would be the cost of uh, the pipeline for 22? I mean, it's been estimated. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, because yeah, uh, the number I saw really didn't make sense to me. But, <laughs> Well, but that's another report. Those are so really big I, numbers. I read, I read too many reports sometimes. You know. Yeah, too many. It's about 600,000. Yeah, this report I have is wrong. Yeah, somewhere in there. The report I have is showing There's some assumptions yeah. here, but it's probably... But, but, but I like my report showing 1.4 yeah, yeah, let me tell you the way it, it would be uh, routed, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. cause not you have you have four... Uh, eight. You have yeah, eight yeah, here. Really you have 14 yeah. here. And of course, the the shortest distances we will go right that way. But you have all this development here, so you have all kinds of easements and purchasing okay. this and all kinds of stuff. So the the easiest way, most feasible, the least expensive is to go up to Olive, go up Olive, and, that, and down to to Well. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff is still not very developed, so you could probably hug the the edge of the road and right. not and, and reduce oh. costs that way. So if, if I know uh, most uh, uh, or a big piece here uh, would be still probably along the edge of the road. Most of most of the olive would be along the edge of the road, and not here. I know it's developed, so you probably have to get into the paper. You can always go further out. Yeah, as much as you could go for, yeah. further out. You can always go across uh, Lewis and Crescent or North Main. Come back down too. So, yeah. so there, you know, yeah. so I made some assumptions on that, but I think that's probably yeah, because that's how it's not developed, so it's easier. Yeah. yeah. So, so for for um, David's benefit, so let me just talk over again and, and, and for the other the public. So, so we have uh, well 14 here, okay, which we know has uh, uh, TCP zone. Uh, I mean TCP uh, a, a high TCP. All right. So. If you want to, if you, if we want to spend that six hundred thousand and bring it over here and treat it, we're we're, we're basically have to double the capacity of the of the uh, of the filtration system, okay? And the moment you start filtering that, that's added cost that you're going to have to address for TCP, okay? The benefit that we have, all of us here, is that right now it's not regulated yet, okay? So if you want to start treating all the wells. Even though you're not being regulated, that's certainly up to you. Yeah. However, we don't. Be but, but, but yeah. At least be ready for it. Yeah, yeah. Right. but yeah. but that's why we're doing well eight. But to the, be ready. do the designs for it so you're ready in case that happens. You know. Yeah. yeah. So well eight has a T in it so that you can tie in yeah. and so forth. <coughs> but right now, if we try to do that, I can tell you that we don't don't have any. any, any, any <laughs> eat. We got the TCP. Yeah. No, no, but you'll eat up that TCP. But I mean, obviously, exactly. that, that's the highest contaminated. Well, 14 is going to go by, by yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's going to go in the future. The We're going to address them all. It's, but I don't want you to expect. You're not talking about the, it's not regulated, but it's, they didn't give us money for nothing. No, so they gave us money for the Complete, contract. Completely right. complete understood. So I just wanted to let you know that the money, none of the money, the, we haven't received any direction of using the money for anything that is not going to be regenerated back. So any TCP money, even though there's no limits, in any limitations on the money, it was clearly stated that if we borrow any money from TCP, it goes back to TCP with interest, okay? Because eventually, you're going to have to address all the wells, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. I'll just say that's the highest. Yeah. And I think that's like 80 or something. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's high. It's on the high end. Yeah, I mean, but then it's 13, then it's 8. I mean, as soon as... It's going to take about what, April, May to get eight on, eight online. Eight online. Um, yeah, I think it's right in there. And as soon as it comes up, and it's ready to accept it. We can start putting oh, ice in there. We're putting fourteen there too. Yeah. This is our design for that now. Mm -hmm. So, so, so at the end of the day, it's it's if you if you want to include well fourteen already, we that just should. means that 
we'll hope, we'll, uh, that's fine. But I think I was telling you, if you include eight for the, the net for this five-year block, we have to incorporate the cost of the, the media and stuff, which is going to be incorporated in the rates. Okay. So the idea here is, do you want to wait to when it's going to be regulated, you know, say four years out? And address it, or do you want to address it now? That's that's a policy decision, and we're only we're looking at it from a policy decision, but also from a from a uh, cost benefit, and also from uh, the the overall uh, uh, cost to the yeah. to, 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 to the if, if, <clears throat> if you treat TCP, I'm not a lot of the TCP now, but with, there's a fair amount of costs associated with operating and maintaining those facilities. <coughs> that you're doing as a proactive type of thing may not be forced to do if it's not regulated. So those costs would be basically something that the city would decide to do as a policy so yeah. that you show that you're actually uh, going what, forward with question that, have, even though okay. it's not regulated. Question. Yeah. A question. Once we start printing World Aid, it's going to go down to pretty much zero, zero, zero right? Yeah. right? If you pump 14 in there, you, don't, you can't. I mean, you can, but you have to add more, you know, the, the way... No, no, no. I mean, yeah, you have to add more vessels. So even though we're not really tight, there's no limit? And it's, it's not blending. You can't blend it in this particular right. case. TCP is a is an interesting animal. So but why wouldn't it be, if you got, you're adding it to the capacity of the system, yeah. why wouldn't I'm it be? Explain. No, look, the... Uh, maybe that's... Yeah, it's that's, kind why, of that's, that's why I wanted to talk about this. So everybody it's really kind of an absorption media. So if, if you have a hundred... It comes in, out comes zero. Right. Right? So these, it's, this media is going to start getting exhausted pretty fast. If, right. You know, now let's say that you only have to treat down to 50. Right? So what you do is you bring only a portion of this 100, and then the rest of it you bypass and you blend on the back end yeah. to get that 50. So you only run a little bit. Of well, so that's, what I'm, that's what I was saying is if you get all 14 over there and you use that as a bypass, you should be able to do the same thing, right? So, yeah, but what are we targeting here? Uh, your media is going to start getting exhausted faster. Um, your, your, yeah, you see, yeah, but we don't know what, what we're you, shooting here. You wouldn't what, be able to hit your target. Your like target. Really good odds you wouldn't be able to hit your mm -hmm. target. So, so you're suggesting that the well eight needs to be targeted. That's the one that really well, well, already there. Well, what we're suggesting is that well 14, as well as 11, and all the other wells be programmed right. to address TCP in the future, right. but not in the next two to three but years. work on what eight right now. Yes, but work and that on would eight. be money that would be spent in the grant that would be... No, no that's the settlement money. The settlement yeah, money. Because it's TCP. Settlement money. Okay, right. that's what yeah. Yeah. The, the treating of as, associating this, this, this cost, whatever it is, you know, the media cost is maybe 100, 200, whatever it is, a year, that needs to be paid by the, what, what I was saying, needs to be paid by the o &M system. So now that's bringing up your revenue requirements higher. Now you need to raise with your, with your, with your collect in terms of uh, rate revenues, you need to collect maybe 100,000, $200,000 more, which means that, you know, you're putting that onto your rate payers. Um, now, when it could be pushed, you know, a few years back, when we know this system, let's say we decide now we're going to treat down to 50, and then later on, regulators come and say, well, you only need to treat down to 75. And then these are fictitious numbers. Well, you've been treating all this time at 50, you've been spending your TCP on at 50, when you would have only had to treat it down to 75. Um, it's, it, again, it's a policy, it's a policy, it's just a matter. Okay. Just, yeah. Since we're talking about policy and we're talking about borrowing from the TCP money, mm -hmm. paying it back would mean that the amount that is being paid back would be built into the rate structure. It would have to for, be. In, to. in the future, okay. Now, so, yeah, because we're, we're, as of right now, we're, we're, wait, we're borrowing seven hundred thousand dollars of the tcp fund for 
well our well operations and maintenance in this budget year so we're already borrowing from that fund to do something else with and that money is going to have to be paid back I mean I looked at the water capital fund and it is unless there is money in an account that's not reflected in this fund we're already un gone under nine million dollars and shrinking so my cons my concern is that everyone understands okay if we do pay this if we do borrow this money it will be paid back so that when TCP treatment is mandated we have the money to do so and that payback is going to be part of the water rate structure okay so so here, here's the, the, the thing you have to look at and I'll, and I'll back into your, 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 your question there, is that you have to look at okay we, we, we have these needs okay it's either going to be uh, you know, we're going to borrow some of the money somewhere else, or we find more grants, or the ratepayers, or a combination of all the above. Okay, but you have this—you have this nine million dollars that's over here that the council has decided to this point that they want to address just TCP. Okay, so would you like, what Paul said, would you rather go borrow this money from some other entity and pay that interest to them for borrowing because you need it, or do you borrow it from the money you already have? Which is a nine million, and you create a mechanism in order to pay that money back, and then on top of that, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, bring a nice balance. So, some of this money, rather than having to pay it back over a course of two years or five years, you can build it out a little further. Okay, because TCP TCP treatment is not something that's going to disappear tomorrow. So, as long as it's going for TCP. It doesn't matter if it's five or ten years. The idea is for you to be able to, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, it can't be a shocker. It can't be a shock. You know, oh yeah, rates are going to go up two hundred dollars. No way. This is no way. Yeah. One thing, one thing, Jose, you may want to add, mm -hmm. and and the thing about them saying that we're going to use TCP money only for TCP is a council-imposed restriction. It was not a restriction from the settlement. Council says we're going to use this money for TCP only. Well, the settlement, they never stated that. They said, here's your money. You can go get drunk on it or you can put it for filter. They didn't care. Okay, we're done with you guys. Leave us alone now. That's what it was there. The council says we are going to use it for TCP. So they nothing. didn't direct you to do that? No, no. That's so a council. It's the council that decided. Council imposed the restriction, says we got this for TCP. We're going to use it for TCP. We're going to use it for water and nothing else. It's a council well, imposed it restriction. The difference water. between 14 and other ones, 14 is 0 0.78, 11 is 0 0.08. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's a big difference. I mean, 9 is 0.21. That's three times. Yeah. Well, okay. So you, you, there, there's other factors, uh, David, and I'm glad you, you're bringing these things up because I want to flesh them out. That's why it's important here. Is that when you look at wells, you look at what other constituents the wells have how much production the wells have, and some other factors, okay? So, the, what I want you to understand is that, yes, we can take that $9 million and start designing for every well, well, not for every well, but we won't have enough for every well, and start treating those. But what I'm saying is, if you hold off, if you hold off until you have a target, okay, because right now we don't even know w what limit, it is, and then it's not regulated. So what we're saying is, use your money to address these other needs that you have, okay? But you're going to put a mechanism in there so that you can pay back your TCP yeah. settlement fund, okay? And when it's when you have a target, then you're going to grab money from there and address 14, 16, you know, uh, 11, etc. Okay. In the meantime, this allows us to uh, keep the keep the boat, you know, level without it going side to side, and allow the infusion of other funds. Okay, so we can go after these grant funds, so we can uh, uh, stabilize and, and 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 address long term. Because you have to look at everything in, in five year blocks. 
because the Prop 218 hearing process only allows you to raise rates for five-year increments at a time. So in the planning, we're looking at five-year increments. Okay? And, and once you start treating TCP, that's an ongoing cost pretty much forever. And so I'm saying let's delay that a little bit if we can. Let's take advantage of the fact that you can delay, that, that you don't have somebody right here grab because you need money for these other areas. And that money is not disappearing. You're just using it to address another need you have and then paying it back with a little bit of interest and, and then use it as you go along. But, but also... Uh, but it's a policy decision. But, 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 but it's, uh, that's the plan that they're recommending. Of course, the policymakers can change the plan, and you know, and the committee can endorse it and send it on. So, the plan decision isn't made here; it's made. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's whatever the policy is made. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Staff will follow. But staff will follow. I think you need to. I'm just saying because I mean, I, you know, this guy live here, and I live on that side of town, and well, I got little kids, and they're gonna be drinking that water five years till we fix it. I mean, how long, how long ago did we get yeah. that TCP yeah. money? Yeah. I mean, three yeah. years ago yeah. or something? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, eight to yeah. years to eight yeah. years. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. David, I think your, point, your point's very good. I was just curious. Um, I can see what the advantages are from pushing it off. Obviously, they're economic. Um, and uh, also, you, you're going to hopefully have a target somewhere between, whatever, one and three years, wherever we think it's right. going to be. So you, you have a target to go at, so you're not going to overspend. Um, and there's also economic advantages because you're not spending the money and you can go ahead and use the money for other things and mm -hmm. throw interest on it and everything else. But what's the disadvantage by pushing it off for one to three years or two to four years? The disadvantage of pushing it off? Yeah. Is I mean, I mean to, 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 David, to David's point, if it's 50 and I'm, and I'm drinking 50 TSP or whatever. I hear, I hear or his, or whatever. his concerns, the disadvantage is your... Is it, it, maybe the uncertainty that you're drinking a water that, that has a constituent that you know it's known to be a carcinogen. They don't know at what levels, but it's a, a carcinogen in there. What you're doing so, now. So is arsenic, and arsenic is above the level in other wells. So is uh, there is other other constituents that are are. That's what I'm asking. What what are the disadvantages? The, I, I think that the, the disadvantage of pushing it up is just the, the, the fact that. Um, you're delivering water that is not is not of that excellent quality that it could be if you okay. spend all that money, uh, that quality that is if if you, if you spend all that money today in, in fixing that problem. So if somebody came to me today. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong here. It's more of an economic. Mm -hmm. But but if you if 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 you came to me and and they said, okay, is TCP bad for you? Yes. Okay. At, at what uh, at what level? At what contaminant level and for how long uh, they can't tell me yet and so it, it, it's like do you remember the time when they said that drinking too much milk was bad and then they came back and say they said the same thing with eggs yeah all eating you know I mean yeah. I, I just know that TCP is not a good for no, us no I know but you know, know, it was not a good for us well but I mean I I kind of I mean, you. you know, most no, of the no, world, I, I understand. Yeah, they're like at 20, and this one's at 78. That's yes, exactly. yes. Not yeah. 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 I understand that, but if there's no limit. So what I'm saying is, I, I want, I would like to drink water that doesn't have anything, anything. any any maximum fluoride there or anything. You know? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what that has in it. So, uh, so, so what we're saying here is, is that it just comes down to a policy. I can't stand. Uh, you know, I know, I understand. I can't stand out there and, and, and say to somebody, well, you know, hold off, don't drink it tomorrow because X, Y, Z. It's going to have to come down to what they are willing to pay, okay, if they, they want to eliminate, because I would be glad to eliminate TCP from everything and arsenic from everything, but there's a cost. And so if I can't afford the Cadillac, Okay, if I can afford, you know, a, a Ford or Chevy, I mean, it, it's really going to come up to a, the, the, the dynamics of our council to, to find that, that balance, and they need your help, too, because uh, we, we would just like to come and say, here it is, but it doesn't work. So we have to give you the entire picture. So to, to uh, Richie's point and David's point is, okay, the... Uh, I don't want TCP in the water, and I don't want to drink it one more year, let alone five years, okay? And where are we aiming? 
Okay. Do we want to go ahead and take on that additional cost? As long as everybody knows, sure, we'll, we'll move ahead. But you have all these other moving parts that you have to take into consideration. And, and one thing that we forgot to add to, uh, I think, to mention on this, on the long-term planning, I think on the long-term planning for this south part, we talked about centralizing, maybe adding another well for capacity. On the north part, we've talked about centralizing TCP here. But one of the things that we left out was surface water treatment. And uh, as far as, as, far as the, the long term, again, that's not a project that is going to happen tomorrow, but it's bringing, in, years out bring, water. bringing in water from one of these canals, surface water, uh, to blend it with some of your groundwater. So now you're, you're now you're blending your TCP levels even more. You'd be maybe be able to extend this GAC, um, the, the life of the GAC, extend it even longer, even if it's a seasonal thing. Uh, your your surface water, you'd be able to extend your GAC and maybe drive those costs down. Um, so that's one of the long-term um, projects for real long term, long -term. For, the north, for the long north side, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, TCP is a... Uh, and that's why the IRWIC is important, because if everybody's concerned in the area about the resources that we have below and on the surface matters. And so they're going to say, hey, you know what? We we need to help Livingston, okay? And this is one way to, to help Livingston. And so MID is on board. And so this is not something that, that we can do five years from now, and probably not even 10 years from now, because of cost, but if we do everything right, then we can introduce, okay, this extra variable that will give us flexibility, okay, and it will give us redundancy, okay, so that if if there's curtailments of water or if there's uh, groundwater depletion, which is what we're trying to uh, uh, eliminate, uh, all of this comes into the mix, and so and so there's 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 a few steps to get there. That doesn't mean that that is going to happen, but it is something that uh, that needs to be looked at and continue to look be looked at in order for us to have water security, uh, you know, capacity, uh, try to cur uh, curve the uh, or taper off the cost. Because right now, groundwater, as you know, uh, there might even be groundwater, uh, uh, the state might implement a, a, a groundwater a management uh, uh, restrictions, et cetera, in the future, we don't know. And so we need to think ahead. And and, and, and as time goes on, you just can't not plan for something and drop it because that's when it costs you the most. But if, you, if you're planning it, then it'll just dovetail into it. And that's for uh, future. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> I hope we were clear. So this group is going to make the decision on policy to hand to the council? No, no. that's going to be for the council. Well, that's no. what I'm asking. Are, are you, the recommendation to go to the recommendation, recommendation to, yeah. to the council. But then and I don't vote. From this group. Yeah. 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 We won't vote. So the committee will make that decision and send a recommendation. The, uh, so, so you, so you basically, do you have a nine million dollars, or are you borrowing right now from it? No, we have the nine million dollars of TCP okay. money. Yeah. And so it would be. No restriction, you said, he, I think I heard him say, no restriction as to what you use it as long as you use it for us. Self-imposed. No, no, no. Uh, okay. When we, when, we, when we got the settlement money, the settlement didn't say that we have to use it for water. It didn't say that. Someone said, here's the money. That's all they said. But the council says, you know what, we got this money for water. The council put a self-restriction. And that's good. And they should have been. Yeah, yeah. and we did. And nobody asked. We just said, we're going to make sure, you know. But you also uh, made it controlled under C, under the, for the TCC, right? Mm -hmm. You specified yeah, that it yeah, should yeah. be used for TCC. Yes, that it will be used only. for Yes, only for TCC. So that could, be, that could be adjusted probably. That well, no, because the money, if you have, if you say we have $9 million, right. and say that the plan is five, seven, whatever it is, you know, say that nothing says you can't borrow that money with interest and pay it back before you need it for the rest of the project for TCP. As long as it gets paid back, you know. Well, why are you paying it back, though, if it's free money? You're just saying. You just got it. No, no, but we're paying it back to ourselves. We're, we're paying it back to ourselves. I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay. Just, to, just to keep apples yes. with apples. Yes. Okay, so, so what happens. we're saying yes. is, what we're, what, we're, what we're, one of the things is, say, you know, like for our shanker removal, even for water, right. 
It's, it's part of our water system. Yes, it is. You know, it's water. We're saying, so, okay, if TCP is four or five years or whatever down the road, we want to remove the uh, arsenic now, we can take that money from arsenic, I mean, from TCP settlement, uh, lend it to, borrow it, lend it to ourselves right. instead of going to the bank and getting it. Right, right. So instead of paying that 4% or whatever it's going to be to the banks, we just pay ourselves. Because yeah. mm -hmm. right now that money is sitting in a bank earning, what, half a percent? Yeah. That's what it was about. It's, yeah. it's trying to make good financial yeah. decisions as well. Yeah. You're just redirecting that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it will not, as, far, as long as I'm here, it will not be used for anything other than water. It's going to oh, stay there. It needs to be used for water. That's our yeah. biggest concern in yeah. the city. Yeah. Yeah. And when we got that checked, that was the first thing we did. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, good good discussion. Good questions, yeah. folks. This is this is what it's all about. Any other anything you want to say, Nelly? Uh, so. I know we appreciate the senator being concerned and uh, identifying other sources of funding. And, and, uh, you guys can get that money released from. from yeah, I'm just side. thinking about it. I'll check back and see where we're at. I made four hundred fifty million dollars. You know, it's been sitting there for I don't know how many years now. It's been there at least a year. At, at probably a year. Yeah. Well, it's been longer than that. Yeah, I think it was last year sometime that the state uh, yeah. feds brought it over mm -hmm. to yeah. the state. I mean, having it sit there and yeah. do nothing with it. Yeah, so, oh, so it's typical. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. It, it was our trip to DC where we discovered all this. Yeah, because we're, we're talking to EPA and saying we need money for this, we need yeah. to save. Yeah, but your state has 450 million. And nobody knew about it. Why don't you guys use it? When we came back, we sound the alarm says we gotta get this thing done. Yeah. Well, I know Anthony did put a letter of support. I know, you, I know he did. So, so I'm checking know, that letter. He we'll did. We'll make sure that we go back and see where, where we're sitting at in the chain of command. You know, yeah. see what they're doing with that. So. Mm -hmm. well, good, good questions, good comments. Uh, good. And that's very much uh, complete, sir. Yeah. Well, this was